All right, let's close out electrostatics by talking about stored energy. And this is extremely important because we have thought about electric fields as um, effectively being the vehicle to place forces on top of charges, right? They result from the existence of one charge, but they exert forces on all other charges. But I want to recast your, your viewpoint and think of electric field really as stored energy. Um, that, the, that the presence of an electric field itself means that there is energy stored somewhere. Um, and this comes from the fact that you cannot separate two charges and build up potential energy, right? And separating two charges is a little bit like pulling a spring outwards. It just wants to collapse back in. That's a little bit like what we're doing when we pull two charges out. And so you can look at it as all of the electric field that we have created by separating those two charges, there's energy stored everywhere. Uh, and that potential energy is something that we can actually quantify. All right, so let's uh, try to look at this quantitatively. And imagine we have a scenario where there's no electric charge anywhere. And then little by little, we start to separate a little bit of positive charge. We move positive charge here and we have negative charge there and we'll pull, pull in them apart. And we ask ourselves the question, what is the total energy that we have um, created, the total electric potential that we have built up by separating those two charges. And so we can write that as W, where W is the total energy. We can write that as a summation of all those little contributions, like one electron at a time, we're separating positive and negative charge. So the a contribution, all those little contributions, we're gonna represent that as an integral. And the integral is going to be V, V is the electric potential, that we are sliding the electron from one place to another times dq. Right, remember, V is potential per unit charge. All right, this is potential per charge, and dq is the charge. And so this integral is basically, I'm going to take small little pieces of charge one at a time and separate them out until I build up the total amount of charge that's there. And for each of those charges, I've got a little bit of voltage, and now I've got a little bit more. And each time I separate out another electron, I'm building up bigger potential. And so that number V is going to increase as we go, All right? And in fact, we know how it increases. It increases according to capacitance. That Q equals CV, which implies that V equals C over Q, so we can substitute that in here. And we have the integral of C over Q. Sorry, that is a, a little mistake right here. That is Q over C, not C over Q. That is obviously quite important. This is Q over C. And so let's correct that back in this integral. All right, this is Q over C times DQ. This is pretty easy to evaluate analytically. This is Q times DQ, right? An integral of X DX equals one half X squared. This one we know. So this is gonna work out to be one half times Q squared divided by C. This is the total energy stored as a result of pulling apart some amount of charge Q and separating it out, All right? So that's gonna be the total energy that we have stored inside a capacitor is Q squared over C. All right, now let's take this number for a second and let's consider a parallel plate capacitor that we had before, in which case we've got two plates right here and they are separated by a distance D, and we've got area A of both plates, right? Let's take a look at the volume in between these two plates, right? The total volume equals A times D, the area times the distance between them. That's, that's the volume between the plates, all right? And if you treat these plates as being almost like they're infinite, uh, then we end up getting no electric field out on the, above the top plate. We get no electric field 
below the bottom plate, but in between, we get lots of electric field, right? E is greater than zero. There's definitely a non-zero electric field between the two plates. And so we have this nice compact volume that all of the electric field is confined within this volume. And we also know the total energy that's stored inside this volume. So from this, we can figure out basically what the electric field stored, what the energy stored in electric field is. And it's basically gonna be one half times um, Q squared over C. And we also know that C equals epsilon times A over the D. So we can substitute that in. Um, and then we're gonna multiply that by the area. Anyways, you end up with the following that the total energy stored equals one half times AD times epsilon times the magnitude of the electric field squared, right? Now this is the area. Sorry, this uh, A times D is the volume. So we can basically take the rest of this, one half epsilon times the absolute value of E squared, and we can call that the energy density, right? It's energy per volume, right? So what this tells us is actually something, something very important and very insightful, that the presence of electric field basically is the same thing as storing energy. It's in particular a volume density of energy stored. So if you take one half epsilon times the intensity of E and we square it, that tells us how much energy per unit volume we are storing simply by the fact that that electric field is there. And that's gonna be important because as we consider a capacitor as separating charges, what's really important is that we're building up electric field between those two um, plates of this parallel plate capacitor. And that's where the energy is stored. And this is starting, importantly, this is starting to build some of the groundwork to transition from uh, transmission lines to electromagnetic waves. Because if you think about it, an electromagnetic wave looks like this. I've got a antenna right here. Let me go back to black. I've got an antenna. Oh, that wasn't black. I've got an antenna right here and it's radiating energy. And I can radiate this energy in free space. I don't need to have metal to do it. I don't need to have a conductor or a cable. I can radiate this in free space. And we know that this radio wave is carrying energy from the cell phone tower to your phone. And so how do we characterize the energy inside of that radio wave, right? The only way we can reconcile that is by saying that it's actually the electric field that stores the energy. Right? So when you talk about a capacitor, it's not the capacitor that stores the energy, it's the electric fields between, in between the two plates of the capacitor where all that energy is stored. And that makes it consistent with this notion of a radio wave carrying power away through the electric fields. And as we'll see later, the magnetic field will have the same property of being able to store energy. All right. So that concludes our journey through electrostatics. And we brought ourselves to the point where we can now understand more exactly what the capacitance inside a uh, transmission line means. And more importantly, we understand that it can store energy through the buildup of electric fields that are inside that capacitor or surrounding the capacitor. But a capacitor is really a device to build up electric fields via separating charges, thereby storing energy in the electric fields. Um, in the next set of lecture videos, we are going to break one of the fundamental assumptions that we've made so far, which is that things are static. And we're gonna start by getting charges on the move. And in doing so, we're gonna create an electric current and that is gonna lead us toward the magnetic field or the magnetism section, um, which is the other half of the picture that we need to understand radio waves. Um, when we get there, we're gonna find that much like electric fields, magnetic fields also store energy. And so we are going to find that we have it an ability for electric fields to create magnetic fields, to create electric fields, to create magnetic fields, and that will work just the same way that voltages and currents did in a transmission line. So that's a preview of what's ahead, um, but uh, in the next lecture video, we are going to dive into the specifics.